Shalom everyone, welcome to First Baptist Church Children's Sunday School online program. Let us worship our Lord with all our body, heart, and soul. Let us sing a song with our family. Follow the music and sing together. Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin our online Sunday school. Help us to grow closer to you, Lord, and fill us with your grace and understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You all can probably think of a time in your lives when something happened that made you really excited. Maybe it was your birthday or Christmas. Maybe you were going on a trip or someone special was coming to visit you. Excitement can happen over simple day-to-day -day situation, like going to recess after a morning of hard work in school, getting a good grade on test, or finishing the school day with no homework. What are some other things that you might get excited about? When you've shared about something exciting, whether it was something big or small, what kind of response did you get? Do you enjoy telling others about something exciting or enjoyable happened to you? In our story today, Paul wants to share with others the exciting ways that Jesus had to work in his life. Let's see what Paul has to say about sharing the best news of all, the gift of Jesus' love for us. Because Festus was the new governor, King Agrippa and his wife Bernice arrived in Caesarea to greet Festus and to congratulate him on his new position. King Agrippa and Bernice had been visiting many days when Paul's name came up in conversation. Festus explained how Paul had been left in prison by Felix when Felix had left office. He also talked about how the important Jews came to him and demanded that he pronounce judgment on Paul. Festus had informed the Jews that Paul was a Roman citizen and that he had the right to meet his accusers face to face, defending himself against the crimes which they accused him. Festus told King Agrippa that he was surprised that the Jews did not have strong crimes against Paul, and in Festus' judgment, the accusations were weak. Festus told King Agrippa that he had asked Paul if he would go to Jerusalem and be judged, but Paul had appealed to Caesar. Festus had said if he would honor Paul's request. All the information that Festus told King Agrippa piqued his interest. King Agrippa wanted to meet Paul and talk to him the next day. When King Agrippa and Bernice came to Festus the next day, it was not done quietly. 
there was a huge ceremony for the king and many important men of the city where there as Festus told them the Jews wanted Paul to die but he could not find anything wrong that Paul had done. Festus had a problem. Before he could send Paul to Rome as he had requested, Festus had to find something bad to write in letter about Paul so the people in Rome would know what terrible things he had done. Festus could find no wrong in Paul. Festus hoped that as King Agrippa questioned Paul, he could find something that he could write in his letter. As Paul was standing before them all, King Agrippa told Paul that he was free to speak for himself. Paul then stretched out his hand and began to speak. He said, King Agrippa, I am happy because I am able to answer all the things that the Jews have accused me of. Paul said that he knew that King Agrippa was an expert in the customs of the Jews and he asked that the king be patient as he listened to him. Paul then began to tell King Agrippa about how when he was a youth, he was taught from the strictest part of the Jewish faith which was of the Pharisees. He told the king how he used to persecute Christians in the synagogues. But he said, one day he was traveling on the road to Damascus to persecute even more Christians when a bright light shone around him and he heard a voice speaking to him. The voice was Jesus. Jesus was the one Paul was persecuting. Jesus told him to go preach to the Gentiles. Paul told King Agrippa that he obediently preached to everyone that they should repent and turn to God. Paul said that it was for that reason the Jews sought to kill him. In the middle of Paul's speech to the king, Festus interrupted Paul saying that much education had made him crazy. But Paul said that he was not crazy, but he spoke words of truth and seriousness. Paul said the king knew these things were true because they were not done in a corner, but before all the people. Then Paul asked King Agrippa, King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know you believe. The king Agrippa said to Paul, you are almost persuading me to become a Christian. Paul said that he prayed to God that everyone should be like him except for the chains he was wearing. When Paul had finished speaking, the king, the governor, Bernice, and all those who were sitting with him stood up. When they were a little ways away, they talked between themselves and said, This man has done nothing worthy of death or even prison. King Agrippa told Festus, This man might have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar in Rome. Today's story about Paul showed us that sharing with others the many things that Jesus has done for us is a great way to tell others about him. We are commanded to take the good news of Jesus out into the world. We should always be ready to share our faith. To tell others about Jesus, Paul had to rely on his words and the letters he wrote by hand to different churches and people. Today, technology allows us to communicate in so many different ways beyond what Paul had. Cell phones, mails, and the internet make communications incredibly easy, even with people who might live hundreds of miles away. 
Imagine that Paul had access to our technology today to share his good news. Wow! He could have sent emails, videos, pictures, and maybe even text to the people he knew in the different churches he wrote to. No matter how Paul might have used the technology, we can be sure that his message would have been the same. He wanted to share the exciting news of what Jesus had done in his life. And we are commanded to follow Paul's example and make every effort to tell others about Jesus and his love for us. What are some ways that we could connect and communicate with others? In what ways could you share something exciting that Jesus has done for you? Technology has given us some fun, creative ways to communicate with each other and share what is going on in our lives. You've probably used emojis to communicate emotion when sending an email or text to someone. Using emojis, write a message that describes something that Jesus has done for you. As you write, try to incorporate and add emojis that go along with your message. Be creative. You could create a text that shows something Jesus has taught you, an experience you had in which you knew Jesus was with you, or how Jesus has shown his love and grace to you. Lord Jesus, thank you for the lesson we learned today. Help us, Lord, in sharing your grace to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bible memory verse for today is taken from Matthew 10, verse 19 to 20. At that time, you will be given what to say, for it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Our Bible activities today is cooking time. We are making sunny side up egg and decorate it and share it to your family member to show how Jesus loves you and you shared his love by serving food to your family. Have a blessed Sunday. Now we put it on the plate and decorate it. 